Welcome to the Freelance Drive. Here we talk with skilled freelancers about their professional journey. Stay tuned for real life experiences to learn and actionable steps to take to improve your freelancing career. My name is Yuri. I'm a community builder at Code Control and 9 amworks And my guest is Mario Prada, software developer with industry experience building websites and mobile applications, who is agnostic regarding chosen technologies and constantly eager to learn by building new things and sharing his knowledge with others. So welcome, Mario. Hey, Yuri. Thanks for having me. Super happy to talk with you. And that's exactly what I will ask you. I saw that you are a mentor in an Edisrupt camp that helps people to become uh, software developers. And I'm so much curious, what do you do as a mentor? <laughs> yeah, so basically, Edisrupt is a, a Portuguese bootcamp where um, our main focus is to turn people that want to make this career switch into software development uh, with the focus on the front end. So we have this curriculum where you need to learn the normal technologies for that, which is HTML, mm -hmm. CSS, JavaScript, and then React. So we uh, strongly recommend our students to go across this curriculum. But of course, apart from that, as a mentor, you also need to, to give some guidance and some advice uh, um, on uh, to the students. And based on their difficulties and what they want to learn, you set new goals. So as a mentor, you not just want to teach, but also you need to uh, give some guidance and support. That's for sure. So, okay. So I understand that there is a teacher who just read lectures and who take your exams. So from the mentor perspective, what is the difference between a mentor and a teacher? Hmm. Interesting one. Um, yeah, well, both, they both need to pass some knowledge in, in some way, right? Uh, but I think a mentor does something extra. Um, and I talked about these supports and giving advice. And, and I think this is the, the key of a mentor. Mm -hmm. You not only want to pass your knowledge, but you want you also want to make sure that your students or, or your students um, are on the better track or on the good uh, the good track so you you usually you have these one-on-one meetings where you try to understand their needs and based on that uh, do something uh, give some new challenges to, to them so i think the big difference between a teacher and a mentor is exactly that is it the psychologist part Oh, that, that's for sure. That's for sure. I think as a mentor, you need to be prepared for that part as well. <laughs> have you ever hard? Have you ever had hard students? Yes, um, of course. Each student is a, is a student, um, and there are students that have more difficulties in uh, some parts, and you need to make you you need to take that into into action. You need to make attention to those parts and try mm. to uh, understand why do they have those difficulties. And of course, you, each challenge that you face on, it, on these students, you, you need to be prepared and give some coffee, give some confidence to them. And that's the tricky part, right? Uh, because you need to be prepared for that. Do you have a mentor yourself? I do. I do. I think I never ask him about do you want to you want to be my mentor but uh, for sure I have some some people on my group that I consider consider them as a mentor and they teach me a lot and sometimes I also teach them uh, and, and I think that that's part of the process you always set goals new goals on your life and you get mentors you talk with people and you, you should exchange some ideas yeah I totally agree and what does the mentorship process look like for you um, I think that's personal, but uh, for me, at least, I, uh, the first thing I like to do is to uh, know uh, the students I have right now and try mm -hmm. uh, to identify their, their needs. Here we are talking about a boot camp, as I mentioned, uh, to turn uh, students into software developers, but it's important to mention that um, the biggest part of this group is people that have their current jobs and want, want to make this career switch. But mm -hmm. there are a smaller group that uh, 
they are already developers and just want to become stronger in a specific uh, technology or in specific um, uh, programming language. So it's important to understand what do they want uh, and based on that, talk with them, um, set up goals based on, on that. And apart from that, of course, I think it's also important to uh, create some kind of relationship at Adrisrupt, Adris, Adris we are a um, um, uh, remote bootcamp. Mm -hmm. So this relationship is a bit harder uh, comparing with the physical ones. So I, I'm, I'm really focused on creating some relationship with, with students because here uh, we, are, we are here to learn something. But if we can do that in a friendly way, in an uh, enjoyable way, let's do that. So, it's also in if in student needs set up goals and create a relationship with the students so this is for for me my uh, my process of mentorship what is your approach to creating relationships yeah well depends of the person there are shy persons just shy people there are uh, more uh, pe people that like to talk so depend of the the person itself uh i like to uh have these one-on-one -on -one meetings uh, for mm. uh, with each of the students and try to um, understand their path uh, what do they do before this boot camp uh, make them comfortable so they can talk easier to me understand that here there are no stupid questions and uh, we are here to to learn something and i think it's much much more relaxed if you think about it and if you think in a way that um, let's do that we, we this is a, a nine months boot camp so let's just do it let's just talk with each other uh and you can do that with me uh, that i'm a mentor but also with your colleagues so mm -hmm. yeah mm -hmm. this is my approach you know i feel like people still are afraid of asking stupid questions but also if you are not asking stupid questions it's so hard much harder to learn so how do you encourage your mentees to ask those questions sometimes uh, i ask the stupid questions myself just mm. so they can feel comfortable uh, because that's perfectly normal and uh, even for me i'm still learning uh, i'm already the software developer but i'm still learning i i want to uh, understand new technologies and i will always uh, ask stupid questions and in fact that's the those are the perfect questions to start learning and go to the next step so um, yeah i would say lead by example <laughs> exactly <laughs> uh at what knowledge level do people need mentors uh let me add a little bit context so do you think that uh if somebody is just stepping in into development they already need a mentor or they need a teacher first who teach them basics and then they need a mentor or they can start with a mentor immediately yeah, good question. Uh, I always strongly recommend a mentor because for me, answer specifically to your question, at all levels, you will need a, a mentor. You can start as someone that wants to become a mobile developer or software developer. And for that goal, you will get a mentor that already reached that goal. But once you are on that level, once you reach that uh, a goal of you of uh, getting this job or getting this project now you are you are able to set up a new goal uh, and mm -hmm. with this goal comes a new mentor maybe right and the beauty of that is now that you are on this level you can become a mentor of some someone else uh, and mm. this is exactly it. it is like a game where where we exchange ideas uh, now i'm a bit stronger i can uh, teach others and also learn with, uh, with others at the same time. From your experience, how does having a mentor help developers succeed in the professional field? It's, it makes the process much easier uh, just because I'm talking with someone that already faced the issues of uh, getting uh, the end goal, right? Um, it's totally possible to do it without a mentor. Uh, I, I uh, talk with uh, plenty of people that already did it. Uh, it makes the process easier, right? If you think about it, basically you are exchange ideas with someone that uh, knows the exact path 
um, for you to, to, to follow. Um, and we'll teach you what to do and what not to do. So make sense to, to have a mentor on, on those scenarios. Do you have like free mentees or you only mentor in Edisrupt? Uh, no, right now I'm just a mentor at Edisrupt. Uh, but since I, I, uh, I add this career switch on my curriculum, I mm -hmm. received a lot of uh, messages on LinkedIn asking me asking me about uh, what should I do in order to become a developer or what uh, what path should I uh, or what languages should I learn in order to, to do that. So I try my best to to reply to those questions. Um, of course, here there's there's no correct path. It's just the one that worked for me, and I'm really happy to to help if I can. What is the back interest interest of a mentor except for money? Yeah, well, I really like to teach because it forces me to be updated of uh, the current technology. So in my case, I teach about React, uh, which is a, a, one of the biggest libraries on the front end um, community. And here by teaching, uh, not just I'm always updated about the technology, but also I can uh, here some different opinions uh, and these different opinions came from the students and this is a really great way to be updated and also uh, exchange ideas yeah it, it feels like you already you also always have like a circle of people who don't know that something is impossible and they can do because they don't know that something is, is exactly. impossible <laughs> and you you have a mentor yourself so how can one ensure that they work with a good mentor? By the way, like how to find, how to understand that it's a good fit, that a mentor you're working with is a good fit for you? Yeah. I would say that you need to talk with a bunch of different people. <laughs> and uh, right now you have LinkedIn, you have Instagram, you have meetups for social events. So basically it's just you going out there and try to find people with the same goal as you or at least that already reached your goal and try to communicate try to understand what did they do and find a pattern because for the same goal you can um you can see that there are different paths and you just identify more with this one so mm -hmm. you can you want to follow more of this this one so by talking basically the answer to your question is just talk with people, uh, try to create network, and this is it. How to find online mentor just by talking? Because, uh, for example, if so if somebody found a good person they want to learn from, they want to communicate with, so how to reach out to them? How to how to get to them? Because it's not that easy to receive an answer, and it's not that easy to get on a Zoom call. Not at all. That, that's 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 true. Um, you will receive a lot of no's or, or sometimes you just don't receive any feedback at all. Um, but you need to try to communicate in the best way possible. Of course, here, if you are someone that wants to reach something, you don't have anything to offer at, at, uh, at that time. But you try to, at least you, if you are friendly and you try to communicate in the best way possible, you can receive something in exchange. So here, I think you just need to talk with different people. Um, and once you get some feedback, I'm, you don't need to have that moment where you ask, do you want to be my mentor? Because that, ne that doesn't necessarily need to be there. But you just understand by your conversation and see that it's daily or weekly that, well, that person is really helpful, uh, already provide me a lot of feedback about what I'm doing. So it is my mentor in, in some way. So yeah. Got it. So first of all, don't be afraid of no's and just keep reaching oh, okay. out, keep talking to people, keep building your network. And then at one day, oh my God, you're my mentor. Exactly. <laughs> I like that approach. Yeah. <laughs> and you you told that you love helping people and teaching people. So why, like, how did you become a mentor? Like at what moment you like had this thought or maybe somebody reached out to you like, Okay, I have to be. A, I will be a mentor. Like, describe this moment. How it looked like for you. 
actually, to be honest, I didn't at that moment um, because it was really funny. Uh, at Edge Results, I was a student in 2019. Mm. And after this bootcamp, I, I get my first job as a software developer. And in a six months or one year period, uh, they just came uh, to me and asking me, asking me if I want to, to be a mentor there. And I accepted because it was a really great challenge. I like to talk with people. I like to, to teach. Um, so it, it was a good challenge for me and I accepted. So now if you're asking me if I want to continue with that, I do want to continue with this and I will try my best to, to be a good mentor. Got it. And you know, Mario, I really wish to have the sky is the limit, but time is the limit to our conversation. So the final question is, what is your favorite food? My favorite food? Oh, I was not prepared with this one. <laughs> well, I'll go for pizza. It's, I think it's a really boring answer, but here at home, it's what we eat the most. Uh, all types of pizzas and I'm always accept them. <laughs> Welcome to the pizza team, you know? Yeah. <laughs> so what is your favorite pizza? Um, I go for pepperoni because I, I like spicy ones. Got it. Got it. You know, Mario, thank you so much for sharing your experience. And it's been such a pleasure to hear and learn from you. Thank you, Yuri. It was fun. And thank you so much for listening. If you like the show, hit the like button or five stars and share it with your friend. That's it. We're done. See you in the next episode.